Hello friends. Welcome to my channel My Inspiring Thoughts by Upadruti. Today, walk along my temple journey to the state of Puducherry, formerly known as Pondicherry. Did you know that Pondicherry was under French rule for a long time, leading to many French influences which are noticeable here even today. From Chennai, I went by road to this coastal town about 150 kilometers away. Just like the museums, the temples of Pondicherry are also treasure troves of history. For an auspicious start, I decided to invoke the blessings of Lord Ganesha by going to the Arul Mega Mankul Vinayakar temple. As I approached the temple, the first thing I noticed was the brightly painted gopura. The temple is more than 300 years old and its traditional Dravidian style of architecture is enhanced by the vibrant exterior. As I stepped inside, I could notice the beautiful interior decorated with the various forms of Lord Ganesha. one can spend quite a bit of time admiring them did you know that one of the main attractions of the temple is a beautifully engraved golden chariot made from teak wood and 7 and 1/2 kilograms of gold it is covered by copper plates attached with golden rings and the plates are engraved with beautiful artworks all over as a form of prayer many devotees pay a fee and pull this chariot inside the temple complex from there i entered the garbhagraha to worship at the feet of the lord one of the unique aspects of this temple is that lord ganesha is seen in the company of his two consorts riddhi and siddhi which is a rare thing to witness after offering my prayers i moved out to see the other shrines in the complex an interesting fact is that this temple derives its name from two tamil words manal meaning sand and kulam means pond The temple was known by the name Manal Kulath Vinayakar which over a period of time became shortened as Mankulla Vinayakar After a satisfying darshan I headed to the Panchamukha Anjaneya temple in Panchvati village which is about 9 kilometers away As I reached the temple complex the inspiring white colored spheres are the first sight that catches the eye inside the temple the 36 feet high anjaneya idol with five faces stands tall hence the deity is known as panchamukha anjaneya in the center is his own face and is surrounded by garuda hayagriva narasimha and varaha while four of the faces are visible from the front the fifth is visible from behind as we do the parikrama as i made my way to the sanctum sanctorum and recited the hanuman chalisa The mammoth idol gave me a feeling of peace that all difficult and tough challenges would be taken care of by the Lord himself. Did you know that the popular offering made here by devotees is a necklace made of vadas popularly known as Hanumar Vadamale? During my school days Pondicherry meant Sri Aurobindo Ashram. Now that I was here, I was definitely not going to miss visiting it, and that's where I headed next. Sri Aurobindo Ashram is an ashram located in Pondicherry city. This was founded by Sri Aurobindo Ghosh 
in 1910 after he retired from politics and settled in Pondicherry for spiritual pursuits. He was joined by a small community of disciples who decided to stay with their guru. After a few years, a French writer, Mira Alfasa, joined as his spiritual collaborator and later came to be known as the mother. The mother was a great source of inspiration for the disciples who lived there. The ashram provides all the basic needs of its members for living a healthy and simple life. There is a library in the ashram where members can read and learn about the history and teachings of the place. Also, there are various cultural facilities like dance, theatre, music, art and sports for all-round development of the members. After walking around the various facilities, I visited the Samadhi of Sri Aurobindo Ghosh and the Mother, which is well decorated with flowers. There was an overall sense of deep calm and tranquility in the whole atmosphere and one can experience peace and the true meaning of life. In addition to her contributions to the ashram, the mother also had laid the foundation of Oroville, the city of dawn, which was established in 1968. Of course, that was my next stop. As I reached Oroville and walked around in the sylvan surroundings, I could see how the mother's vision to unite the world in peace and love and bring together a new civilization of people who help each other has succeeded here. This is a community with a difference, a place where children grow and develop integrally and to whom education is given not for passing examinations or obtaining certificates, but to enrich existing faculties and bring forth new ones. The eye-catching feature of Oroville is the Matri Mandir, which was completed in 2008. The huge dome surrounded by 12 petals is covered by golden discs and reflects the bright sunlight giving its characteristic radiance. Inside the central dome is a meditation hall known as the inner chamber which contains the largest optically perfect glass globe in the world. As I meditated in silence, the sheer spirituality of the place overwhelmed me with a sense of total serenity. Feeling thoroughly relaxed and refreshed, I took some time to stroll around the surrounding gardens and admiring the greenery. Oroville is truly an oasis of tranquility far away from the material pursuit of the outer world. Having had a great spiritual sojourn, I could not miss spending some good time at the promenade beach. It is beautiful stretch of land with the gentle waves and the cool sea breeze taking me to another plane altogether. Though I'm not a great believer in such things, a passing by lady fortune teller took me by surprise by looking at my palm and narrating incidents from my life which even I had forgotten. 
I left Puducherry fully convinced that this place has some divine connect. Hope you enjoyed this delightful experience of the temples of Puducherry. Namaskar till we meet again in our next temple journey.